Well, hey, YouTube, Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango, W3CT, your good old friend Jack. And today I'm out here at US 1409 once again. Yes, reactivating the same park, but I'm looking for that kilo, right? And I want to get that before March of next year because that'll be my one year of POTA anniversary. All right, so today's video is going to be a little different. And what we're going to be doing today is kind of doing a comparison between uh, wattages and the Wolf River coil antenna I bought, okay? So today, instead of bringing out the Zygu G90 with the 20 watts, I decided I'm going to bring out the QMX radio here, okay? I'll bring out the QMX. We're going to operate 5 watts and run that hopefully on 20 meters. I don't know how it's going to hold up today, but we'll see uh, if we can make some contacts. And we're going to set the Wolf River coil up exactly the same way I set up before here. And uh, anyway, so right over here. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and I'll get set up and we'll see if we make any contacts here. What I'll do at the end of the video is I'm going to plan on doing a comparison with my maps. Uh, so I'll be computer logging today um, with hammers and I'll be able to show you the comparison between the maps. And we'll see if there's any difference between 5 watts and 20 watts. All right, let me go get set up. Okay, guys, as you can see, I got the Wolf River, Co Wolf River Coil, the soda package, set up exactly where I had it before with the G90 with the big old big old short whip anyway so and if you see my last video when I was out here first setting this up deployment is a lot faster now I mean it's a lot simpler because you know I know how it goes together <laughs> the 53 feet wires are a pain in the backside so um, a friend of mine told me you can get a screen and put under there or some kind of mat uh, you guys can explain that more to me what I need to make this a quick deployment when it's cold out here so and I'm still looking for a mount for the car and nobody's responded yet. No comments on the, uh, the car mount there. So, yeah, I want something to mount on the lip of the hatchback here, right here. I want something to put up there on the hatchback so I can uh, be able to, you know, in the wintertime, just come out here and just screw it on there and, and start operating. So, um because once it gets really, really cold here in January, February, it's going to be really chilly. So today is a really nice day. I thought, if I don't get off today, man, I'm crazy. But all right, let me go ahead and I'm going to get the QMX set up and uh, get up on the air there, start calling the CQ. I did pre-activate or pre-spot. So I'm going to see, make sure I hit my spot time and uh, see if I can get calling CQ there and see what happens. So as I said, I don't really do the activation part of the videos because I feel that there's a lot of great activators out there doing those, and I like watching theirs. So this is more of a comparison between the two radios and uh, what the uh, soda special will do. And guys, somebody asked me in a comment, I'm sorry if I never pointed this out, that is the mini coil, okay? That's not the, I think they sell the mini coil and the silver bullet. This is the mini coil and it's the soda special. Okay, that's what I purchased. So, all right, well, let me go in the car here and get this set up and get on air. Okay, guys, as you can see, I got my QMX up around the dash, uh, sitting at 14.065. I've been listening for a while. I did, uh, I am using the personal hotspot on my phone so I can do some computer logging. So, and again, there's the Wolf River coil cars coming through the window. And I'm going to get started here. Um, and I'll let you know, guys, what I come up with. And uh, if we can make any contacts. So I'm going to get started and uh, see where I can go. All right, guys. So far, so good. Hopefully my hat's still straight. I always have a problem keeping hats on straight. I don't know why. But um, 16 QSOs so far here. Um, probably about an hour and a half. The band's... 20 meters was weird today, man. So... You know, I don't know how many I got on 20 meters. I mean, we're going to look at that in this video, but I'm going to do that when I get home so I can take some screenshots of the maps. But I actually did get the uh, Nano V&A back out here. See? Right here. And I went out to the uh, Wolf River coil out there, uh, the, the Mini, 
and I actually uh, retuned it for 40 meters. It really wasn't wasn't that hard. I mean, you know, I got presets set up on the Nano VNA, so I mean, yeah, I would like to have an antenna analyzer. I think it'd be a lot quicker if you had one, but they're expensive. So this thing does a fine job, and I put it back on the QMX, and the QMX actually has an SWR kind of gauge in it, and I ran back and like kind of took a look at what it said, and it matched the Nano VNA. So, but right now I'm on 40 meters. I just got um, Oh, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five more calls on 40 meters. So my goal is, I guess, if I hit 20, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, or 4 o'clock, whatever comes first. So we'll see what happens here. But I'll let you guys know, and I'll show you more of this back at the back of the house. I'll uh, put this together and uh, do a little bit of uh, work there. I will show you in this video here, once I when I go to tear down, I'll show you the uh, coil setting for 40 meters. I thought it would be all the way down and it's not. So I don't know if this mini, I don't know if this mini will tune up for 80 or not, but I think I'll need a longer whip. So, all right. I just wanted to check back in with you guys there. Like I said, I got 16 at the present moment. So we're going to see what happens here. And uh, like I said, I want to pack up and get out of here by four o'clock. So, all right. But thanks for hanging in there with the video. And uh, yeah, so I'm going back to call CQ and see what happens. Try to get you in the sun here a little bit. Well, anyway, the um, QMX did its job. I hit the 20, that's what I wanted. And it's just turning four o'clock and that's what I told you in the video. I just wanted to show you the setting on this coil um, for 40 meters. So uh, 20 meters, it was almost at the top, okay? Have a look at this, okay? So for 40 meters, I'm almost in the, well, not quite in the middle, pretty close. And I'm wondering, you guys can tell me, if you make take a black Sharpie and just make a marker, would it always be about that? Or is it going to change if I change the radials? Um, I'm not sure. You guys can tell me in the comments below. So, but yeah, so I made uh, 11 contacts on 20 meters. So 11, then that would be 9, obviously, on 40 meters to hit the 20. But, um, and I can tell you guys something. Turn this camera back around here. Make sure I can see me with the sunlight here. I can tell you guys one thing. <laughs> when you pre-spot or pre-activate, it was really weird. I don't know if it's ever happened to you or not. So I set the activation window is what I do. I always set a window. And I set it to start at, like, say, 1 o'clock Eastern time. And to end at, like, 3.30 Eastern time. Now, UTC, of course, right? But anyway... I looked at my spot and I'm wondering why nobody's calling. I'm looking, I'm looking. Here, it took me and sent me a QRT. It said, QRT, thanks for hunting. I didn't send that. I didn't put that on there. I think, I'm thinking the, the program did it, the POTA application. You guys tell me if that's ever happened to you before. Does it automatically say QRT when your time expires or if you're still activating? Does it know you're still activating? It should. It should because I was still sending out beacons. So, I was still hitting a reverse beacon. Anyway. All right. As I said, I'm not going to end this here. I'll end this video when I get back home. I'll do some screenshots of the maps comparing the G90 with the um, with the Soda Special Antenna there, uh, the Wolf River Coil. And I'll uh, do a comparison with that map and the map from today with the QMX. Just to see what the difference is. Um, you know, the difference between 5 watts and uh, 20 watts, right? So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the next time I come out, I'll definitely... I like to switch the radios back and forth. You know what I mean? Give them both a little workout. All right, guys. I'm going to clean up here and get out of here. i got to stop at the store and get some dinner on the way home. Um, but I'll finish this up at home. So I'll end it there. And I'll uh, see you uh, back at the house. Okay, gang. We're back here once again into the uh, ham shack slice computer room, whatever. <laughs> But as I said in the video, uh, I got all packed up. I came home and I wanted to uh, show you a comparison between the maps. Between 5 watts, we're looking at 5 watts. We're looking at 20 watts uh, with the G90. So I don't have a 100 watt radio, portable radio. I mean, obviously I can take my Icom uh, 7300 out to the field. Now it'll probably happen this summer sometime just to try it out. <clears throat> all right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff here. And let's get me somewhere out of the way. How about up here in the top corner somewhere so we can so you can see me as we're talking. Okay, so 
on the left, on your left here, uh, where my where my picture is, this is the map of the G90, okay? So when I run the G90, I always run it full tilt. So I always run it at 20 watts. Um, and this, remember, with the um, Wolf River Coil Soda Special, or the Mini, okay? This is running without a tuner. So that's something to pay attention to. I didn't need a tuner because I had a low enough SWR because I was able to tune the antenna. And, you know, I don't know, you guys can probably tell me better than I would even know, but if, in fact, the uh, it makes a big difference not to use a tuner. I know I have a friend, uh, N3WS, that uh, he always runs resin antennas. He never uses a tuner. So, you know, I like the idea of no tuner because when I use the, obviously when I use the QMX, there is no tuner built into that. So you don't want to always rely on the tuner. You want to be able to, uh, you know, tune the antenna down. But does it make a big difference if the radio tunes it or if it's resonant antenna? Okay. So as you can see from the G90, now this is also different days. Okay. I want to make that clear. So this could be different band conditions. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I can tell you the, the G90 was all 20 meters. And you can see one if you look at the very top here. This VE7 KDU uh, way up here in Canada above the state of Washington. So that's a pretty good trip uh, for that, you know, little 78-inch whip antenna and uh, three ground radials, three 53 feet ground radials, okay? So, and then through the center here, and I can't blow this up, obviously, because uh, it's just a screenshot of my map. But, uh, you know, you're looking at all the way over to into Texas, uh, looks like. Nebraska, so right around that mid states, I guess you could say that, like the Mississippi line, somewhere through there, right? Now, if we go over and we look at the QMX, okay, this is totally five watts, okay, maybe not even five because the SWR was running about 1.2, so you might have been running four watts, but we're going to say five for all all intents purposes, okay, five watts. So this is actually running. Um, five watts and if you look here i didn't make texas okay it doesn't look like i'm in texas at all kansas city so kansas city like around uh, i guess that's in missouri right so it's somewhere in that area kansas city there um yeah kansas city i'm sorry kansas city kansas it's almost into kansas and a lot of you know if you look here on the left again at the g90 a lot of florida uh, Georgia, you know, that's kind of normal for me in this area of Pennsylvania to be hitting those places. And I see a few more on the East Coast. Yeah, on the East Coast over here, okay, than I do with the G90. So, uh, you know, again, that can be band conditions. But what I wanted to do here before I get rid of these is I wanted to blow these up. So we're going to look at these one at a time. So here is, we'll go with the G90 first, okay. So here's the G90. Again, let me get my head out of the way here so you can see this. Yeah, British Columbia, all the way up here at the top left part uh, above Vancouver. Okay, so that was a pretty good trip. Uh, and, and the guy was coming in strong. So the other day I was watching <clears throat> somebody's video and they was actually talking about that. Do you put a lot of emphasis on signal reports? Is, is that something that's, that's huge to you? Like, oh, no, it's a 449. This antenna is junk. You know, or do you put on that you communicated with somebody that far away? It doesn't really matter to signal report. As long as you heard them clearly and you're able to make the contact and, uh, you know, you could carry on a conversation if you needed to. Because remember, ham radio is all about emergency services, right? Emergency radio services. And we want to make sure we can always have that ability to contact somebody when we need to in case of emergencies. So, yeah, so signal reports as far as signal reports or communications, you know, or contacts. Hey, they're in the logbook, so I must have talked to them. So if it was a 449 or a 339 or a 599 or a 59 if you're on sideband or a 58 or a 57 or, you know, I can see like if you're getting a 38 on sideband, it's like maybe your voice is not the, the clearest or whatever. So anyway, back to the map. So this is the G90, as I said, and as you can see blown up here, uh, it, it, it did really, really well. So, okay, we're going to get out of this one, maybe. Okay, we'll get out of that one and pull that back over here. There we go.
All right, now we'll blow up the QMX and have a look at it. Okay, so the QMX here, uh, as I said, all the way out here to Kansas City, um, Arkansas, down in Memphis. You know, it still amazes me how far radio waves will travel, right? Uh, and with only five watts, I mean, that's pretty, uh, pretty cool in itself to have that five watts thrown out there. And, uh, but yeah, you know, I'm still really impressed with this antenna. I was looking with my wife last night. We was looking at Faraday cloths, Faraday, Faraday, Faraday cloths. Uh, and, uh, a local ham I met here recently told me you can also buy aluminum screen, like window screen. You can lay that down as a mat. So I'll probably buy a Faraday cloth, um, just to see if it works. Well, obviously it works. You guys are doing it out there. And I appreciate all the YouTube videos because they help us. They help each other. That's all these videos are meant to do is just help, right? So if I can show you a comparison here. And probably part of this comparison I'm showing is probably for a future video I have coming up that I have a thought for. But we'll see how that goes. I mean, but yeah, so it does work. You know, uh, 5 watts compared to 20 watts. I Like I said, I don't have a 100-watt radio to compare that to. Uh, the gentleman I met here recently, Bill, locally, that also operates the same park that I've been operating here to try to get my kilo, he stated that if you use a 100-watt rig, it's kind of counterproductive because the pile-ups get to be so hot and heavy that it's hard to actually copy anybody anyway. I hope that makes sense, so... It made sense to me, but it's something I just, I, you want to try it, right? So I watch Kentucky Fried Ham, and if you're not checking him out, check his videos out. Kentucky Fried Ham. And uh, he has, I believe it's a Yezu radio he bought that's 100 watts. And I tell you what, man, he gets a lot of polyps, and the man can work them. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was something that you can uh, use. I'm going to bring me back up here in the center. Hopefully this works. Yeah, if the hat's a little crooked, I think it's because the monitor's crooked. I've been trying to get the hat as straight as possible, right? Anyway. So, yeah. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate you out there. Uh, if you're not subscribed, why not? Smash that subscribe button. Give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of content. And I'll be bringing you more content. Uh, you know, I have a lot of antenna builds in my head that I'm working on. It is winter time, so they're going to be hit and miss. But I have a big garage, man. I'll be building tents in the garage and I'll be deploying them in the yard and, you know, temporary deployments and see how they work. So, all right, guys. Well, again, I'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and all my videos, uh, as always. And uh, thanks to all the people that have subscribed out there. I do appreciate you 100%, man. You know, you're building the uh, little community here uh, on this channel. So, and we have a big community of ham operators on YouTube. So, it's, it's great. It's a great presence. All right, take care. I'm getting too wordy. I'll see you later. This is Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango, W3CT, your good old friend, Jack. And this is my ham radio journey. Guys, 73s, and I'll catch you on the airways. Bye for now, everybody.